Have you ever wondered why we make assumptions? Why we make judgments without all of the information available to us? Why we use rules of thumb, educated guesses, intuitive judgments, guesstimates, profiling, or what's even referred to as common sense? All of these fall under the category of heuristics, and today we're going to discuss what those are and how they work. Let's get into it. The basic Wikipedia definition for a heuristic is any approach to problem-solving or self-discovery that employs a practical method, not guaranteed to be optimal, perfect, or rational, but instead sufficient enough for reaching an immediate goal. Think of this as a mental shortcut. We use these mental shortcuts when we don't have all of the information available to us to make complicated and coherent explanations out of difficult situations. There are three primary forms of heuristics, availability, representativeness, and anchoring and adjustment. We're going to discuss how all three of them work, why we use them, and give some examples of each of them. We're going to start with availability. The availability heuristic is when we make an assumption based on how easily something can be brought into our mind, or how available it is to us. We use this type of heuristic because people often do not have the time or resources to come to complete conclusions about situations in their life. When something is easily brought to mind and can be easily thought of, it is much more likely to guide our decision-making process. A famously cited example of this type of heuristic involves shark attacks. Take for example a family is planning a vacation to the beach. The family's child is very excited for this trip. One day before the trip, the child sees on TV an advertisement for a scary shark movie, such as Jaws, and is frightened. The next day at the beach, the child refuses to play in the water and instead stays on the sand. This situation arose because the shark commercial scared the child and thus is very easily brought to mind. When the child sees the water, they remember the shark and are then brought back to feelings of fear. What are the odds of being killed by a shark? According to the Florida Museum of Natural History, the odds are less than 1 in 264 million. Even knowing that statistic, though, is unlikely to influence one's actions nearly as much as if they had been exposed to something like the Jaws commercial. The next type of heuristic is the representativeness heuristic. This is the mental shortcut used when we categorize things or people intuitively based on how similar they are to a pre-recognized category. If it looks like a dog and barks like a dog, it is likely a dog, or so our mind thinks. This is an essential heuristic that is used by humans on a daily basis that allows us to make quick decisions about our environment. Take, for example, two scenarios where you are walking home down a city street by yourself and there is no other person around. You then see a person come around the corner a few blocks away. In scenario one, the person is wearing all black. They have ragged clothes on and their hood up. Their hands are in their pockets and can't be seen. They are slumped over and walking in your direction. What are you likely to do in this situation? A fair amount of people would answer that they would either turn around and walk the other direction, cross the street, or at the very least, get their phone out. In scenario two, a person in a nice blue business suit carrying a briefcase instead turns the corner. His face is clearly visible, and he has a smile on his face, and his other hand has a cell phone up to his ear. He is also walking in your direction. What are you likely to do in this situation? Most people would answer that their actions would not be altered. They are likely to just keep walking and pass by this man without an issue. The difference in reactions to these two scenarios is the representativeness heuristic. Man A looked like what we imagine when we think of either a beggar or, even more worrying, a criminal. His face and hands were concealed, his posture was irregular, and his clothes were ragged. If it looks like a criminal and walks like a criminal, it may just be a criminal. In this case, the representativeness heuristic may have saved your life. Or, it may have just made you avoid an innocent man with no ill intent. Our minds often lean towards the safer and more likely option. Man B appeared to be a harmless businessman. His face was revealed, and he appeared to be in a positive mood. The mind did not place him in the potential category of criminal, but instead the category of a normal law-abiding citizen. That said, he could have just as easily been a criminal. But the mind leaned towards the idea that this man was not likely to cause us any trouble. The last heuristic we are going to discuss is the anchoring and adjustment heuristic. This type of heuristic works as the name implies. Our perceptions and judgments are placed and adjusted based on some form of stimulus that acts as an anchor for our thoughts. The conclusions we come to are likely to be heavily influenced by the anchor. Take for example I ask you the question, is the population of the United States more or less than 410 million? Now what if I asked you to guess what the population of the United States was? Take a few seconds and think of an answer. The odds are that you are likely to answer somewhere between 350 million and 450 million. The real answer, as of the 2018 census, is 327 million. Don't feel bad, I didn't know it either until I looked it up. 410 million acted as a very specific anchor. It was intentionally high, but also not to a point where it seemed extremely unrealistic, such as if I had said 900,000 or 2 billion. 
Most of us would know that neither of those two numbers are plausible, but we would most likely see 410 million as such. Seeing 410 million as a realistic anchor, we based our judgments around it. Alright, those were the three primary forms of heuristics. Availability, representativeness, and anchoring and adjustment. Have you ever found yourself using one of these types of heuristics? If you have, leave a comment down below. I'd like to hear your story. Thank you so much. I hope you learned something this video. This is Asura from Asura Psych. Have a good one.